Hi, my name is Siddharth Agarwal and today I'm going to give you a demo of deploying Microsoft Exchange 2016 with A10 Thunder ADCs. Here is an overview of the lab setup topology. We have an active directory server at 10.1.0.210. We have two Microsoft Exchange 2016 servers running on Windows Server 2012 R2. We have also created a database availability group for which you need a witness server. And we have created a separate witness server at 10.1.0.215. The Thunder ADC is deployed in inline mode and offers the following functionalities. It will do a load balancing of the traffic directed towards the exchange servers. It will also perform SSL offload, thereby relieving the servers of the task of encrypting and decrypting the traffic. By virtue of SSL offload, it will have visibility into the traffic and thus it will also be able to do URL-based switching. It will also do HTTP to HTTPS redirection. So in case the user types the address of the exchange server as HTTP, it will be securely redirected to HTTPS. The ADC will also automatically add OWA to the URL if in case it is not present. The ADC will do health monitoring of each service running on the Exchange server. So even though we will be deploying the ADC with a single VIP or a virtual IP address, it will do a monitoring of the services at an individual application level. It will also do OWA authentication and offer security through DDoS mitigation. Now, let us take a look at the settings on our Exchange server. First, log into your Exchange server by going to the URL localhost slash ACP and then give your administrator username and password. Then click on servers in the left pane and servers in the right pane over here and you will be able to see the list of Exchange servers in your setup. In this case, I have two Exchange servers, WinExch01 and EXCH02. Now, let us take a look at the setting for the virtual directories. Over here, you will see that my OWA has a common URL for both internal and external URL. And it is mail.atenlab.com slash OWA. If I look at my URL for ECP, it is again a common value for internal and external URL and it is mail.atenlab.com slash ACP. This will enable us to deploy the ADC with a single VIP instead of having multiple VIPs, one for each service running on the Exchange server. To look at the database availability group settings, click over here and then you can see that I have a database availability group named DAG01. Let us look at some of its values. So here I have my witness server, which is winfs.atenlab.com, which is having a file shares folder. And then the group members in this database availability group are winexch01 and winexch02. By default, Exchange servers require the connection to be an SSL connection. To enable SSL offload on Thunder ADC, we need to disable this requirement on the Exchange server. For this, first go to your IIS manager. Then click on the server name. And within that, go to the default website. Here you can see the list of services. To disable SSL option for each of those services, click on the service name, click on SSL settings, and then disable the option require SSL. Repeat this for all the other services for which you want to disable SSL. In my setup, I have disabled this option for all the services as SSL offload will be done for all the services on the Thunder ADC. Now, let us take a look at how to enable POP3 and IMAP4 services on Exchange Server. By default, POP3 and IMAP4 client connectivity isn't enabled on Exchange. To do so, go to your servers and then within that, go to servers again. Click on the exchange server and click on the pencil icon over here, which is for edit. 
and within that you will see the options to configure pop tree and imap for services so to configure pop tree services go to pop tree over here and these are the settings on my exchange server as you can see i have the logon method configured as plain text because i will be doing ssl offload on thunder adc i have the port on which it is going to be listening for unencrypted connection on 110 and for SSL connections it will be listening on port 995. Similarly the settings for IMAP are as follows. Again I have the logon method as plain text the port for unencrypted connections is 143 and the port for secured SSL connections is 993. In this setup, we are going to enable OWA authentication on Thunder ADC with basic relay protocol and hence configure OWA and ECP authentication to basic on the exchange server. For this, go to virtual directories under servers, click on OWA. Go to authentication and make sure you have basic authentication enabled under the exchange server. This concludes an overview of some of the settings on the exchange servers. Please note these are not all the settings and for a comprehensive overview of all the settings that you need to do on the exchange server, please refer to the appropriate Microsoft documentation. Also, make sure that you verify that your Exchange 2016 is functioning properly before you begin the deployment of Thunder ADC. To configure using AppCentric templates, first log into the web GUI of the Thunder ADC device using your regular admin credentials. Once logged in, go to System and then click on App Template. If prompted, enter your admin credentials again. Once you are logged into AppCentric templates, click on Exchange and then click on Wizard. Here you will see the two deployment choices. One is SourceNet and the other is Inline. Inline deployment preserves the client IP address when the traffic is sent to the exchange servers. Here we will choose the inline topology and then click next. Under virtual server, specify your VIP and the addresses of the exchange server. Here the VIP is 198.51.100.74. Then add the address of the exchange servers, which are 10.1.0.211. And 10.1.0.212. Then click next. Next, you can specify the SSL mode for the Thunder ADC device. Here you have two options SSL proxy and SSL offload. We will choose the option SSL offload. I had already created an SSL certificate and key, so I can choose that one. If you haven't already done so, you can always create one by clicking on the create button over here. I do not need a certificate chain over here, so I will leave it as blank. And then turn on the SSL everywhere option. The SSL everywhere option will configure HTTP to HTTPS redirection, HSTS, and will also prefer the perfect forward secrecy ciphers, which are highly recommended. Click next. Here you can enable OWA authentication on the ADC. Type in the IP address of the Active Directory server. For Relay Protocol, you have the option of choosing BASIC versus NTLM. Here I will choose BASIC and then click Next. Over here, you can enable the options for IMAP and POP3 services. 
here I will enable all the four options and then click next for SMTP I will be using port 587 and hence enable this particular option and click next finally you can review all the configuration options you have chosen so far and if everything looks fine you can click on finish once you click on finish you will be shown the configuration that has been automatically generated by apps and quick template you can review the configuration and you can either apply it on the ADC by clicking on the apply button over here or you could copy it and then manually apply it on the CLI of the Thunder ADC device. Here I will just directly click on the apply button which will send the configuration to the Thunder ADC device. Once the configuration has been applied to the Thunder ADC, you will be automatically taken to the configuration template. Here you can review and make any changes if you want. And then if necessary, you can click apply. To make the new changes take effect. Now we will access our exchange server using Outlook web app. For this open a browser and type in the URL. Here I have typed in the URL http mail.atenlab.com. I have not typed the address as https since the 810 ADC will automatically redirect us to the https address. Also, it will automatically add slash OWA at the end of this URL. So, now we go to this. So, as you can see over here, I have been automatically redirected to the HTTPS site. So, this is a self-signed certificate. It gives me a warning which we can ignore for now. Also, the Thunder ADC has automatically appended slash OWA at the end of the URL. Now we will log in to the exchange server. And as you can see, I have been able to successfully log in into the exchange server using Outlook Web App. Now we will access our exchange server using Outlook 2016 client. Since this is a self-signed certificate, ignore the warning for now. And as you can see, I am now connected to Microsoft Exchange server using Outlook 2016. I will now send a sample email from this Outlook client to my own self and see whether I am able to receive it on the Outlook web app or not. As you can see, I have received this message on Outlook 2016 client. Now we will see whether we have received it on the Outlook web app as well. Logging into the host running Outlook web app, I can see that I have received the message over here as well. For an overview of Exchange Server Services and Traffic Details, go to Exchange and then Dashboard. To get a status of the services running on the exchange services, click on member services. Here you can get the health monitoring status for the checks performed by the ADC. To get the list of OWA authentication sessions, click on auth sessions. To get other traffic details, you can look at the charts which are displayed on this particular page. With this, we conclude the presentation on deploying Microsoft Exchange 2016 with Thunder ADC. For deployment guide, please go to the URL atennetworks.com slash deployment guides. Thank you.